Remember last Sunday's message? What was it? Kuna watu awakumbuki kitu na walikuwa. If you are not there, it's okay, but I still don't excuse you. Is that message on YouTube, Paul? Or it will be put today? Yeah. The last Sunday's message will be put today. Now, the topic we were handling was cultivating meaningful relationship. Now, the reason why we were doing that is because this church is a family. Uh, we are growing as a family. We are not a place where people come to visit God and then disappear. We are a family. If you belong and you still don't feel the sense of family, uh, something is not very right. We are working on building a family. Amen. And in families have to do with relationships. Good, strong relationships. And it's our responsibility to make sure that that happens. A, a pastor will not do that. You have to purpose it within yourself to be part of a family. Amen. So cultivating meaningful relationship. So that was part one. I am going to part two of that. So we are just continuing with part two today. Amen. So we look at John, John chapter 13. John chapter 13, we are on uh, part, part two. It's on a subtopic. It's on a subtopic that I'm going to give you. But let's read first. John chapter 13 from verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, I'm reading mine is King James Version. Kuna version ingine hapa kwa screen. Okay, let's, let's read that uh, version. Let's, let's look at that version also. It says, uh, uh, now before the feast of the Passover, back to King James, eh? when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world into the, unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. You know, you know that's a very powerful statement. Verse 2, and supper being ended, this is now they were taking, they were, they, this is when they took the communion. You remember the, the, the Lord's table? It happened around this time. Verse 2, and supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, that's a very sad one. So Judas, having been with Jesus for three and a half years, being under training, imagine Jesus being your pastor for three and a half years. And at the end, the devil enters you. You know, <laughs> you know that's a very serious thing. Jesus himself being your pastor. After three and a half years of learning at the feet of Jesus, the devil enters you. It's a very serious case. Very serious. And you become a betrayer. By the way, I think we should look at that one a little bit. <laughs> After walking with Jesus for three and a half years, you betray him. Of course, Judas betrayed him for three and four. 30 pieces of silver. Ask your neighbor, what are you betraying him for? Hey, talk to your neighbor. I'm saying that. Ask him or her, what are you betraying him for? Small char, small char. Is enough. Yeah. Enough. Quarter chicken is enough to make someone betray Jesus. Imagine. After three and a half years of enjoying the presence, the glory, <laughs> chips, chips too, hmm? chips na sausage, 
enough to make a student betray Jesus. Not only student. Okay, Judas was there. Verse 4, he rises up from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and guarded himself. So, akajifunga towel. That is Jesus. Anajifunga towel. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was guarded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. You know, alikuwa na osha migu, alikuwa na kara. That the sitting position was circular. They were in a circle. That was the normal traditional way of sitting together. And they were not using seats. They were reclining. Reclining ni kulala kidogo. Chini, kuna carpet, mumelala kwa carpet, but you are supporting yourself na. Na this, left. Left, and then you eat na your right hand. So he was doing it, going round. So when he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Now you mean you want to wash my feet? Verse 7, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now. Thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. You know, Peter knew what that meant. For someone to wash your feet. He knew what that meant. So he said, You will never wash my feet. Now, I'm interested in how Jesus answered. He said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. If I can't wash you, then you have no share in me. You have no place in me or in my fellowship or in my family. We have no fellowship if I cannot wash your feet. Now it's good to mark that. Let's go on to verse 9. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. I think Peter likuanga na mambo mingi. The issue was migu. Sasa nataka kichwa. Nataka nini. Peter, I think uh, when I go to heaven, I want to see Peter. I want to have a look at him. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. Already an honor Judas. I, I hope that verse cannot be applicable to us, that we are clean, but... <laughs> that is a dangerous statement. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me master and lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Amen. I don't know whether you have had your feet washed. I think I've had such an experience. I was in a, in a certain fellowship and the leader came with a karai. The maj. Watu wa oshwe. So kulikuwa ni utoe viatu. Unajua wanaume wanakuwa na viatu na socks. So utoe yote. Uoshwe. <clears throat> now, our subtopic today in part two of the message is feet washing. We are still on cultivating meaningful relationship. Feet washing. Because some of you, I may be repeating myself by talking about feet washing, but uh, is different. 
Umesoma John 3.16 marangapi? Amen. <clears throat> now, the culture, washing feet was a culture, by the way. It was normal. It was, it was not strange. The normal thing that used to happen within that culture was wash feet. You know a desert. I don't know how many of you have been into a desert. But you don't need to really be in a desert. It's just uh, you only need to walk from Majengo to Pilot. And you know what will happen. Now, these people used to live in houses that had no seats. They would sit in a circular form and then food will be put in the middle. Right in the middle of the circle. And reclining means the, the person, I mean, your head, your head is almost at the feet of the next person. Because you are reclining in a circular form. So if you bend like this, supporting yourself with your arm, then the feet of the next person is right at your head. So, getting into a house, having worked throughout the day, your feet are dusty. You have a lot of dust. And then the heat, the heat in the Middle East and sweating and all this. So, you can imagine your feet are dusty and also sweating. And then you enter into someone's house like that. Uh, some of us do not care. We, we don't even need to recline, but I don't think you can come to my house with that kind of feet. Uh, today, I'm talking about now. Ziko dusty, nazime sweat. You definitely will want to do something about it. <clears throat> so the culture was in every homestead, there used to be slaves. Now, not slaves in that manner, ile negative, ile mbaya, ni kama house helps, working, or house boys, working in the family. Now, some homes used to have several slaves working for them. Now, the slaves were also in ranks in some of those big homes. The slave who had the, slo the lowest rank was the one charged with the duty of washing the feet of people who came in, whether visitors or family members. If you came in, the slave of the slowest rank would be given the business of washing feet. So it means washing feet was not a very enjoyable thing. It was ugly because it was even very annoying many times. But it was necessary that for you to be part of the, the, the fellowship or the home, or the family, that time, your feet needed to be clean. Praise God. So what happened here is these disciples got together, and they were having supper, and no one washed their feet. They all got in together, and I think because of equality, nobody washed their feet. So after eating, Jesus decided to do that duty which they all ignored because they all felt we are equal. We are of the same uh, same status. So why should I wash your feet? So Jesus decided to wash their feet. And Peter decided to complain. He said, no, 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 you cannot. Because he knew what that meant. If your master would wash your feet, he knew what that meant, so he decided not to. But Jesus answered him and said, if, you, if I cannot wash you, then you have no part in me. That's very important for us today. Praise God. Now, feet washing means if someone decides to wash your feet, or if you visited someone's house and they decided to wash your feet, by commanding their slave to do that, it meant a few things. One, it meant I have opened my house for you. For you to get in here, 
you want to come to my house. That is, if I refuse to wash your feet, it's enough message. You don't need to get in. Where is Sema Kilo Unataku Sema Lafu? When the Zako. But if he sent a slave to wash your feet, it means you are welcome into my house. Praise God. And not only my house, you are also welcome at my table. You are now free to sit at my table and let's eat together. Amen. We can now eat together. Another thing feet washing meant was to refresh your visitor or to refresh your brother or to refresh your sister. It was a time, of, actually washing feet is very refreshing. Very refreshing for those people who love to be clean. When I was young, I used to play a lot. Played a lot. Football, what, mean, but I didn't like washing my feet. That is something I hated. So I made sure uh, my normal way when I was playing football, I would play until the time that I would not see the ball. You know? So I couldn't see it. Now I would walk home. That's how it was. We were living in Makongen. So I made sure my mother never saw my feet. And I would sleep like that. Many times. And then you wake up in the morning, mugui nakaki to ingine. So, I would go to take water, I would use water, whatever in my feet, <clears throat> and then run to school. So, I didn't like washing my feet. Now, if someone washes your feet, it's a time, it's a refreshment, it's, it's refreshing you, especially in a desert. I want you to know the heat of the desert. Eh? Uh, you only need to go to northeastern, you can experience that heat. And you see how refreshing feet washing can be. Praise God. The other thing it means is to serve. To wash your feet means to serve you or to minister to you. Another thing it means to protect. I want to protect you when I'm washing your feet. I want to protect you. Or I want to administer a form of healing. I'm bringing to you a form of healing. And symbolically, feet washing means correct. To correct someone, to counsel someone, or give advice to someone. And lastly, feet washing here means to open up. It means I have opened up. If I remove my shoes and give you my feet, it means I am ready to open up to you. Amen. I am allowing you to see. Unajua, many people are very beautiful. Ukiangalia face. Lakini ukiangalia ka mugu kale ka doko. The smallest toe. Si unajua. Unaweza pata imejikunja kidogo. So hata ukiambiwa you are perfect. Una make sure umeficha gani? Hebu angalia yako one. Ama angalia your neighbor. Ladies don't wear shoes. So, or oh, closed shoes. So you can look. Ziko na mambo mingi, by the way. Mambo mingi. So, for someone to remove the shoes and tell you wash, then he's opening up. Sindio? He's not hiding anything. In other words, it means I am making myself vulnerable to you. Amen. I want to be vulnerable to you. Because I know after that you can go talk to people about my toe. But I want to be Open. Amen. So you are free. If you want to go and mess up my name, fine. But I am open to you. Praise God. And I wish we can all get to that point where we can trust each other at a degree that I am not afraid you are going to gossip about my toe. Ama kakucha kalitoka hapo kitamu. Na sijaona yako, by the way. Usikiria na ungeju yako. <laughs> Praise God. So, if you refuse to be washed, 
there are only two things. If you refuse to be worshipped, it means you are not part of the family. That is, you don't want to be part of the family. You don't want to be part of that fellowship. You don't want to be part of that home or that supper. You don't want to be part of it. Because umeyamua <laughs> umeyamua kuficha migu yako and you cannot enter into that fellowship with feet that are dirty. So refusing to be washed means you are refusing to be part of the family. Praise God. Now feet washing is two-sided. It cuts both sides. One, it means for you to be washed, you have to take off your shoes. Amen. Remember God telling Moses, take off your shoes? Remember Joshua was told the same thing, take off your shoes. You have to be willing. In this business of feet washing, one has to take off their shoes. And as we have said, that means being vulnerable. It means that vulnerability there means you are exposing your mess. I'm going to show you the mess, by the way. You are exposing your filth to someone else. Because you cannot be washed when you have shoes on. So that's one side. You have to take off your shoes. Amen. The other side is as to do with whoever is washing. It means you have to humble yourself. You cannot wash if you have not humbled yourself. You can't. You have to humble yourself and be ready to get yourself dirty. Feet washing is at the risk of making yourself dirty. On behalf of your brother, or for the sake of your brother, or for the sake of your sister. So one has to take off the shoes, another one has to humble himself or herself enough to make themselves dirty, put away your dignity, and be a slave to your brother. Be a slave to your sister. That is fit washing. Praise God. Amen. Now, I want to tell you uh, let me get there. Fit are not the same. Fit are different. I'm not talking about yours, the two. No. Everyone here has a different foot from yours. They are not the same. And feet here represent people. People. So dealing with, with feet washing here, you are actually dealing with a person in totality, whatever they are. <laughs> Your feet is exactly who you are. Amen. So, we have different kind of feet. And we are called, according to the calling of Jesus, wash one another's feet. Amen. That is the ministry we have been given if we are going to form a relationship and a family that God can look at and say, this is my family. Amen. It means in that family, everyone must be willing to be washed. Amen. And everyone must be willing to wash. Amen. And feet are very different. Very different. So in a fellowship like this one, we have certain things we, we are going to deal with as we deal with each other here and as we fellowship and relate with each other, 
there are things you are going to see that you never expected to see. You are going to have some experiences you never expected you can experience. But it is because not every foot here is like your foot. Amen. So are you getting that? So in feet washing, you are going to handle different kind of things. And I want to show you today, just in point form, the kind of feet that we are dealing with every day. Every day. In a fellowship. In a church fellowship. In a family. A, fellow, a church which is a family. The family of God. Feet are different. Can I give you those types now? I believe now you understand it. And we are still there cultivating meaningful relationship because feet washing in what is one of those very important things that you must do to be able to have a meaningful relationship with people. That's why Jesus tells Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you cannot be part of me. Amen. Yeah, if you don't bring that foot here for me to wash, you cannot be part of me. And I cannot, if I refuse to wash your feet, then I cannot be part of you. That's why it was so important. And Peter understood it. And he said, now, not just my foot, wash even my head. You know, put me into it. I am willing to be into it. Amen. Feet are different. Number one, types of feet. Number one is heavy feet. Heavy. Heavy feet. A heavy foot is a real burden. A real burden. Burden. He is a burden. Burden to people. <laughs> you know? A burden to people. A heavy foot is hard to lift. Because you will have to lift that foot and put it in the basin. Now, kashike if you want to now, heavy feet, by the way, a heavy foot is more dirty than the others. You know, collect a lot of dust. I was told, I was talking with someone who works. When I was looking at this message, I remembered kuna places people go to do in it one in a pedicure, ni pedicure. Manicure alafu, pedicure, yes. Now, there are a lot of things. I know some men don't know what that is, what, what pedicure is. But there are a lot of dealing with your nails. There are a lot of scrubbing. Uh, a, a lot of, uh, is it, massaging it. You have to lift it. With one hand, you have to do some scrubbing because uh, it has developed some things. I don't know what they are called. That need to be removed. Now, I asked somebody. To tell me, what's the experience when you are dealing with somebody's foot? And it was a lady, and she told me, that thing can make you tired. So she gave me an example of one day someone came in, and she would even hear him walking, coming. You know, you can hear the footsteps, and she knew today I'm in trouble. <laughs> So when the person came and she looked at the feet, she told me she stopped, she stood up and went to the window and looked out and asked her partner for a glass of water. She said, I need water first before I can do this work. Because she couldn't imagine what she was going to deal with. Heavy feet is very hard to deal with. People who make things impossible and they don't want to change. People who are not interested in whatever you are trying to tell them. People who don't care. Hey, please, let's meet for fellowship on Thursday. Okay, you know where we And they will not feel guilty. It doesn't bother them. <laughs> they are okay. And they were not busy, actually. They were just watching a movie.
you have to lift them and put them into the water. And that is costly. Amen. But you see, the Bible says, wash them. That is, they can annoy you, they will make you tired. I don't know whether you have talked with someone and after that talk you felt drained. Finish it. Even wondered, you needed to go and pray again. And ask God now, what do I do? But you see, the word of God is still clear. Wash them. Amen. It doesn't matter how heavy that brother is. It doesn't matter how heavy that sister is. Take the burden and wash the feet. Amen. Especially some of them will just come. If you go to those places where they do those things, some of them will just come, lift their leg, put it there, and lie back, lean back, and sleep. So your work is lift it and naya melala. Serious. Love. kama wengine wale wa munaenda unanyolewa kwa baba shop na nini, siku hizi kuna masaji. Sindio? Unanyolewa. Wives don't like that anyway. They don't. But you see a man goes there after amenyolewa na masajio analala. So ata migu, hivo, they sleep. So it is your business to know what to do. They don't care. Now it can be very annoying. What I am saying is there are people who will annoy you when you are dealing with them. But you have no right to walk away and say I will never wash. You have to wash that foot. Praise God. Ask your neighbor, could that be you? <laughs> Amen. Ata sayi I'm preaching, I know I'm preaching some heavy feet. Ata nikisema praise God, who tasema, amen? You see? Because you are so heavy. You know? Givingivia. Unajua givingivia? Ula jano. Ula anasema, goti nagia. Now, most of the time, heavy feet are very dirty because they drag. They drag. They collect a lot of a lot of dust. And we have such kind of people. You collect a lot of things. You meet your brother in the evening. You are so annoying. But wash them. <laughs> Another characteristic with a heavy foot is they are very arrogant. Careless and arrogant. Most of them believe it's their right for you to help them. <laughs> Amen, heavy feet. <laughs> okay, number two, we have wounded feet. Migo ikona vidonda. No melete wa wash it. Number one, they don't want to be washed because you will hurt them. And you need to wash them. So this is one of the hardest feet to deal with. Because most of the times you may end up making the wound bigger than it was. They need gentleness. They need understanding in order to deal with them. And in the church, these are the wounded hearts. Someone who was wounded somewhere, <clears throat> they came to church here. We are fellowshipping together. We are singing to the Lord. We are praising God. You are not aware what happened to them wherever they were. You see? Where you are just seeing a sister, you are seeing a brother. But you don't know what is inside that brother. And then you go speak a word. In your zeal as a Pentecostal brother. You go to open your mouth and you speak something that just opens the wound into that person's heart. And the next thing, you don't see them in church for one month. Ask someone, could that be you? 
<laughs> of course, some wounds are self-inflicted. Some wounds were caused by other people. Have you ever heard at mtu akisema hakuna kanisa mzuri? Why do you think they are saying that? That I left church, I have not left God. So unakaa kwa nyumba una watch TV. The problem is the wounds you got from the devil, not from God. God never hurt you. But of course he can hurt you. Praise God. And wounds, if not washed, can be infectious. Sindio? They will carry disease. And those wounds need to be dealt with. So these wounded feet, one thing is if you are a wounded foot, you need to find a way of opening up. Because you can never find a healing unless you open it up. Praise God. It has to be cleaned. Like you go to a doctor with a wound, they do things, mpaka unasikia ni kama ame utampiga ngumu. You know? <laughs> But you see, the pain he is causing you is what will bring healing. Amen? If that pain is not inflicted, the the wound will become something else. Sijui naitwaje. Hivyo, hivyo mnajua. It it will be bad anyway. When I was young I got a wound that took years to heal. Years. And I used to go my mother used to send me to someone every week for injection and I don't know whether that injection was real injection or it was water because I was not getting nothing no change. And up to today I have a, a big uh, scar there after it got healed. But I went through some very rough painful time for for me to get healing so one day i was sent to district hospital and the people i found there they knew they would i would show them the wound and they were not interested in treating it my story too several times i think i remember once when i had to go home in fact i was never treated there They knew the wound is there they can see me I have a wound and nobody is caring about it and that happens many times in the church we have people that are wounded but no one really cares we come to church worship my god have you heard that maybe mine is to come and worship my god and go and go home you are a witch there has to be fellowship amen in church is fellowship <laughs> Amen. So you are, I'm only coming to listen to my word and disappear. If it, if that is your attitude, you need to see the cross. You need to open your eyes and see Jesus again. Church is a place of fellowship and relationship. And we are family and that's what we are working on building. Amen. So when you find a wounded foot, you must learn how to deal with it because you may hurt it more. And if you have a wounded foot, you also have to bear in mind you cannot be healed unless you are willing to open it up. Praise God. So it is both both sided. But wounded feet are normally very angry. People who are very angry for no reason. They are angry too. Mshaona tu mtu hivi ukaona hasira. Na hata mmoja ongea. Ako angry too. Don't worry. Wale hawajaona cross. Wale hawajaona cross that is. So unaona ile speed ya ya nini? Pro box. Na kutoka huko. Hebu jaribu kusimama mbele yake mbele ya hiyo pro box. One. One what will happen. So there are people who are just angry. They are also withdrawn. Wounded people, wounded feet are withdrawn. They don't want to get in. Hata mkiwa kwa fellowship awaongee. Hata mki contribute. Amenyamaza tu. <laughs> Kimuuliza na wewe ni aje anasema hata yangu ni hivyo tu. Hivyo tu wamesema. <laughs> They are suspicious. 
when you are dealing with a wounded foot, they are always suspicious. The suspicion is this person is not better than the person who hurt me. Kwanza pastors wanakuwa na mashida, my friend. Unapata someone is your member, but they don't want to talk to you. They don't trust you. Reason, kuna pastor who did what? Who hurt them. So hata wewe, you can hurt them. May God have mercy on pastors. <laughs> wounded people are judgmental. Now, if you find yourself in that category, you are wounded heart. You are angry, you are withdrawn, you are suspicious, you are judgmental. Kakitu kidogo hata saa hii ni kiubiri saa hii. Anani ubiri, kwa nina anani ubiri? You know? Kwa nina anani ubiri? By the way, why do you think you came here? You came here and you niku ubiri. Sindio? You think God sent me here to talk to you about a Masai? A Masai in Masai Mara. You came here that I may talk to you about you. Amen? Not to talk about someone else. So I am preaching you. Are we together? It's you. If I'm not preaching you, then I don't need to preach. Because I'm not giving as in light when he cares of Abnuas. Wale wali soma hizo vitabu. Okay, they also like to criticize. They criticize everything. Wounded feet criticize everything. Hata saa hii utakasirika na hii maua iko hapa. You know? Kwa nini waliweka hiyo mbona hii kwa ya yellow? Na wewe huku leta. Ni mwingine alitumika na Mungu kuileta, si ndio? Anything. You look at things around and uh, you always have something to to criticize. But you see they are responding to the pain that is inside. You know? And that's their way of expressing it. Now your healing will not come until you open it up. Amen. There are people who are hurting and if you are dealing with them you need wisdom on how to handle them with care praise god actually some of them are people who fell in sin they got wounded there and uh, it is very hard to restore them they don't want to be restored they will avoid water at any cost that is the water that is used to wash the feet eh? they will want to avoid it at all cost because they believe you will hurt them praise god so such feet need a lot of care when you are dealing with them but here is a warning for you feet washer don't attempt to handle an issue unless you know that you are qualified to deal with that kind of an issue amen never assume you don't know everything my friend you don't so always always the church has leadership if you know you have an issue that you cannot handle refer to the leaders in the church they will know how to go about it amen lest you take a foot and create more wounds than than what was there but that which you can handle do it with all your heart. Amen. So it's good to know that the fact that we are spiritual, that's not a qualification to handle everything. It's not. You need to know what you can handle and what you cannot handle. Lest you handle someone and you never see them again in church. So to go up and say, where did so and so go? <laughs> where did so and so go? We don't know. Umbe, someone thought they could handle a problem that they instead of handling they messed it up now because the person who was wounded was wounded before they will say that church they will not say that brother or that sister it will be that church that church may the lord help you amen then we have touchy feet touchy touchy you are touchy najua kuna watu i noticed i have known they are people if you approach them and you just start shaking your hands like this they start laughing because of being 
sensitive. Unajua kuna watu huwezi shika hivi. Hapo huwezi shika. Atapiga nduru hivyo tu. Na ndio huyu amejaribu. <laughs> There are people you can't touch like that. One time we were in a mission and uh, my pen so we were seated somewhere on benches we had gone to preach and one of us was talking so we were seated on benches and then my pen fell I dropped my pen accidentally so i bent to pick it and touched a lady who was sitting in front of me ali piga nduru serious kwa meeting nduru then watu wakaanza kuniangalia suspicious It was very embarrassing. Serious. Unaona mtu anakuangalia hivyo na huyu mtu ako na ukora fulani. You know? <laughs> Touch feet. Touch feet are very annoying to deal with. Because the moment you take them, you handle it, you want to scrub it, they start kicking. <laughs> So most of the time they may kick the water they may kick your face or kick the water and splash it on your face they waste your time and they waste your energy touchy feet are not cooperative they don't want to cooperate if there is anyone dealing with touchy feet maybe elder lawrence with the issue of uh, home cells they don't want to cooperate they react with every touch and lash out <laughs> touchy feet will attack you by the way when you mean well they will kick you most of the time when you are dealing with a touchy foot you will be left wet and dirty Have you ever dealt with people after talking with them you felt like you have seen <laughs> you are not clean enough in other words they have done something that has stirred some evil in you so it is hard touchy people are people that are hard to correct when you correct them they take offense and they feel bad about it they start talking about it they interpret correction as a no that is a rejection they interpret correction as rejection when you say no you think you have rejected me you don't need me rebuke touchy people you don't see them again but the scripture calls us to wash them amen it is our responsibility to find a way on how we can relate with touchy people and help them overcome that case that they are struggling with amen so touchy people are your burden and it takes patience to deal with them if you are going to wash people's feet you will have to learn how to be patient amen wash them wash them hata wale unaosha anapiga hiyo maji on your face wash them don't say i will never wash you again will never come to talk to you again hiyo ni hiyo sio fellowship number four, the slippery feet slippery feet slippery feet are very frustrating people you can't hold them you can't make them stay at one point they will always slide off and go away today you have them and they seem like they are responding well tomorrow you don't see them they are gone today yes i was blessed hallelujah this is what we need to do and then next week you're counting on them you don't see them slippery people they are full of excuses but very convincing may the lord help you not to be slippery 
We have brethren who are so slippery in church. You never know where they are. Ask them, where do you live? Na hapa hivi. Mi naishi tu na hapa hivi. No. They will never tell you where. Because they don't want you into their house. <laughs> so kila mtu akai kwake. Praise God. I, I know some of you said you, don't, you want your space. No, we are not taking your space. Amen, Anne. It's good you have your space, but you have to be available for the others. Sindio? Praise God. So stop being slippery. But those who are slippery with patience, we need to follow them up. Amen and find out what the problem is and see how we can incorporate them back into a fellowship where they can fellowship with each other responsibly. Can you imagine some of us are here, nobody even knows your second name. Ebu Liza, your neighbor, what's your second name? And you will find that a problem, the problem is either you or them. You have never bothered to know. And they have never bothered to to tell you. At ule ule sister na vanga ngo ya red, you know? You know? <laughs> that lady, that lady with the long hair. It's always like that. And we are here. Amen. So when you find those slippery people, you need to exercise patience. If you're washing a, a slippery foot, exercise patience. Otherwise, you will never help them. So may the Lord help us to deal with slippery feet. Amen. Okay, number five, need the feet with jiggers. Jiggered feet. Kuna miguzi, kuna jiggers. Musha kuwa na jiggers wewe. You no know, jiggers are animals living in human beings who are alive. <laughs> jiggers means where, where you are a host. You are a host of some very nasty, ugly, ugly things that are feeding on you. And that is very real spiritually in church. Where you are a brother, you are saved, but you host some animals. Some very unclean spirits. <laughs> some very funny habits that can only be identified with the devil. May the Lord help us. Praise God. People who have jiggers don't walk straight. They walk na migu kama zimeenda. And I've realized that people who have jiggers, it's very hard to remove those jiggers because some of them like them. Because when they are chewing you, you know jiggers, you don't feel pain. You only feel, you, you enjoy scratching yourself. So if it is there, all you do is, you, know, you are enjoying the, People who have some very funny, nasty habits in church but cannot subject themselves to correction. If you're in church, you will have to be corrected. Amen. You will have to be rebuked. You will have to be instructed. Dealing with, with jiggers. We need to remove them. Amen. And remember, dealing with jiggers is a very dirty work. It's very ugly. Every time you are sitting with a brother, you are dealing with some sins that you are not even supposed to be dealing with. Some attitudes that, and they seem to love the attitudes. You know, they don't want to change it. <laughs> Praise God. If your brother has jiggers, help them out. Deal with them. Niliskia upper Keno. By the way, Keno. Keno looks like a good place. Lakini, there was a problem in Ken. People with with jiggers. Now that's 
in the natural realm. In church, churches have jigas, I am telling you. And it would be easy to do with a shetan. Able to put here Galatians, Galatians 5. Let me show you some jigas in church. Galatians 5, from verse 18. Quickly. Nawezi kushika hizi migu. Hizi migu kishika mugu ya jigas, my friend. <laughs> Utapigu wa teke. If you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. <clears throat> Verse 19. Now the works of jigas are manifest. Which are this. <laughs> Adultery, fornication. Now as we read you tick. Where you are. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. By the way, give us ile version ingine. Ile version ilikuwa gani? H, H what? Yo, let's, let's see. Let's get that. King James version seems to be whatever. Let's go back. Okay. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. And the obvious too. Vile vile. Ata ukiificha, miguya jigas, ata ukiificha, we will start noticing by how you are walking. Sindio? It will be obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, higher, 20, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife. What's a strife? Kwa church, my friend. Strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, <laughs> selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions. You need to vikundi. To vikundi vikundi. Kwa? Kwa kanisa. Don't want fellowship na wengine. Mume jitenga hapo. Envy. Drunkness. Carousing and anything similar. Sasa ongeza, yako. Hizo zingine zako ambayo zijaweko hapo. Anything similar. Things that are connected with that. Niwambia ingine. Mudomo. Ya masengenyo. Hizo, eh? Na kutukanana. Hypocrisy. You are marking those things. Jigas. Those are jigas. In the church, we have responsibility. You know, both sides. One, to open up to a brother or a sister. Amen. Number two, when someone opens up, learn how to handle it and help them to get out of it. Amen. That's what is called feet washing. We are making each other better than they were before they came. Praise God. Okay? We don't want to take much time on that. Lakini umepata. Sindio? So, be willing to wash and be willing to be washed. Amen? In order to deal with jiggers. And jiggers are contagious. So beware, when you're dealing with jiggers, you may live with another with a jigger yourself. Okay, number six, the smelly feet. Kuna miguzi na nuka. Kuna watu sayi wakitawa viyatu wapa. Kutawana watu wameanza kutwist their noses. So it is not fun. It's not very good. But, we have to wash smelling feet. There are people who will come to you with feet that will annoy you just because of the smell. Tabia ni? Na unajua kuna avas that say is evil company corrupts good morals. And it's very easy to justify ourselves with that verse. And keep away from helping 
one another. The verse is true. If you keep evil company, you will be wicked very soon. That's a jigger. It will mess you up. But when we come to the house of the Lord, you are not keeping evil company. It's only that you have noticed someone who has a jigger somewhere and you need to deal with it. Now, smelling feet can be very annoying. They will make you angry. They will make you irritated. You will want to hold your breath and twist your nose. But remember, you are a servant. Praise God. You are a servant. Judas was wicked. Judas was very corrupt. And Jesus knew Judas. And he knew Judas had that mess in himself. But when it was time to wash, he washed Judas. Amen. He took those feet and he washed them. He did not tell him, Judas, where Tabiayako is smelling. I don't want fellowship with you. No. He told them, bring your feet here. And he washed it. So when Judas decided to betray Jesus and he died in his sin, it is not because Jesus did not attempt to make him good. He is the one who rejected it. Praise God. Let someone get lost, not because the church refused to help or a brother refused to help. But let them get lost because they have refused to accept the help that is being given. But we have to deal with smelling feet. And I tell you, some of us are very smelly. Mpaka watu wanaanza kukuwa void. Lakini unajua tunanuka nga nini most of the time? Mudomo. Mudomo ndi nanuka. Tumapata mtu tu parra. You know? You bleed, madeno. You just bleed, madeno. So no one wants to get close to you because that interaction, they will hear their names. Kwa nini? Kameme. I'm a thicker town today. Unajua kuna kakitu kwa nito thicker town today. So people want to avoid. So we have people in church, lakini tabia yao ni inanuka. So are you smelling? Vibaya, siyo ile kusmell mzuri. Smelly feet, kuna watu wana kasirisha watu. So most of the times our tendency is to keep away from such people. We don't want to relate with them. We want to be away because who wants to always smell something that is not very good? <laughs> Amen. So Judas may be among you. Wash him. We want what? Relationship. Number seven. Quickly, I'm, I'm finishing number seven. The hardened feet. Kuna migungumu. Hardened feet. Hardened feet. It's the worst kind of feet you can deal with. <laughs> hardened feet. And I think we should finish with this one. The worst kind or the most difficult kind of feet you will ever deal with. They are very dry. Ushaona migu na paka mafuta akashiki. Imeka kwa cement. For some time. Aishiki. They are very stiff. They are toughened in their own corruption. So you can't bend them. You can't massage them vizuri. You can't wash them well. They are not well oiled, so they are rough. Now when you are dealing with the rough feet, those rough feet will affect you negatively. There are people who have developed an extra layer of skin on themselves. You cannot correct. You cannot shape them up. You cannot show them the right way. 
they know everything. And they need what? Kuna kuna stone, kuna stone ilikuwa naitwa Niliambiwa kado kitambo. I think my mother told me naitwa Kamasia. Sijui kama hiyo ni kijaluo. Hmm? Ni kijaluo. Kamasia. No iko. Hata lugha yenu iko tu lakini because you are hard and foot you can't tell me. Isn't it? It is what? Ah, okay, whichever. <laughs> whichever. Now you need those stones to be able to scrub some feet. And it is not good. Do not think they will enjoy. They will not think you are massaging them. You will be hurting them. When you are talking with a toughened foot, ni wale you can't correct, you can't shape him, you can't tell him this is the way. This is how things should be. Ukisema hivi na yeye anasema they keep countering what you are saying. So it makes it impossible to be able to talk to them. And some of them you bring that correction. They will give you one word, you will never talk again. <laughs> na ataenda but those are the kind of people we have in the house of God. And yet God expects us to build a family with such kind of people. So for that to happen, what do you think should be with each one of us? We need to have a very deep relationship with God himself for us to be able to have a deep relationship with one another. Amen. The closer you get to touch the spirit of God, the more you will find it necessary to keep washing one another's feet. Amen. So the only secret here is that we learn how to draw closer to Jesus. The more you touch Jesus, the more you find it necessary to relate with your brother and your sister the more you will see a reason to form a family, a church which is a family. Because many of us, as much as we are building a family here, you will find that immediately we say the grace, you have disappeared. Sindio. You don't want to be anywhere. You, want to, you don't want to be part of what is happening. There are different departments in the church but you find that you don't belong anywhere because you don't want a relationship with anybody. May the Lord help us to change that habit. Praise God. And may the Lord help us to help such people find relationship and fellowship with one another in the house of God. Amen. I have realized there are people, even in a church, we can be here singing to the Lord and you will not sing. Lakini, when you are watching man you, your voice will be heard. You know? My wife is asking whether we have perfect feet. Do you think we have perfect feet? Yeah, akuna perfect feet. Akuna perfect feet. Of course, that's what I'm saying. We are all, we are all here. Hakuna perfect fit. Where angalia hizo two numbers? Tick where you belong. There is nothing like perfect fit. If you have a perfect, if you are a perfect foot, please go to heaven. We don't need you here. You will scare us. <laughs> We are working towards being perfected. The reason why we are washing is so that we may attain perfection. Amen. Which will never be in this world. Every day we are growing to be more like Jesus. More like Jesus. And that should encourage some of you. Do not think that you are the only wicked one so you hide your sin there. You don't want to talk. There are people who have gone through things you have never gone through. 
even worse things than what you are in. Amen. But they found healing in fellowship. They found healing in relationship. Amen. So don't sit back and say ni mimi tu. Nobody understands me here. You know. <laughs> Nobody understands what I have gone through. No. Someone understands. There's someone who has faced something that you have never gone through. Amen. And they found healing and that person can help you to find your healing. Praise God. That is the way of building meaningful relationship. Because if we don't have that, we we are just going to be another religious what? Just a religious church somewhere people go on Sunday sing and say oh yeah we sang well. Sindio. You? you went in with your jigas, you stand you danced with your jigas, you spoke in tongues with your jigas and you're going back home with your jigas. May the Lord help us. Praise God. Can we stand on our feet?